some things I'd like to talk about today that uh, could be conceived controversial by some, but I'm going to express my opinion. And this goes way beyond Occupy Wall Street and the 99% and all of that. But at the beginning, I definitely admire the whole Occupy Wall Street movement. And, I, and to a degree, I definitely still do. I don't necessarily agree with how it's been diluted by a lot of people joining on with causes that don't match what it was originally trying to, to do because once you get a lot of people together, trying to get all kinds of different things and sometimes that conflict, it just makes the movement seem really nonsensical. And now it kind of seems that way. But everybody has the right to protest. Police don't bother and they protect the KKK, Nazis, they protect the Westboro Baptist Church. I absolutely detest the Westboro Baptist Church, but I 100% support that they are able to protest what they believe in. I mean, I detest them, but we have a country where people can protest. It might be very, very untasteful the way that they do it, and I can understand people getting pretty pissed off. But again, police are protecting them. They won't let people go up to them and do anything to them. The police don't hound them. But as we've seen in the past months in New York and Oakland and at UC Davis earlier, police were pepper spraying people that are sitting on the, on the ground. Sitting on the ground, not doing anything. I mean, it's a video. There's no, like, oh, well, maybe they were, no, they were people sitting on the ground. If you need to arrest them, you can arrest them. There was no resistance. Obviously, you can watch any video. But it goes. It just goes so much far beyond that. And the police don't quite understand this. And military people, maybe. And not all police and not all military. I very much respect people that, that serve our country, whether it be in our communities or overseas or wherever it may be, because it's a very dangerous job. And it definitely is, it is integral to, to how we function as a society and how we stay safe. But these people are definitely sometimes unknowingly and many times unknowingly being used by larger things. If you notice things like the KKK and things like uh, Westboro Baptist Church, they're just protesting usually, well not usually, they're always up to me, they're always protesting extremely nonsensical things like they think that everybody should be killed that is gay or black or whatever or whatever it may be. But the moment that you get people that start questioning our monetary system and start questioning companies in a way that is starting to become unprecedented, where the, where the consciousness of the populace is starting to open up and start to realize what's really going on, all of a sudden, police are starting to, to do really violent things. And I'm sure it's not at the discretion of just a police and it's like, oh, well, I guess I'm going to pepper spray some people. It's, it's because they're being told to, obviously. And sometimes, of course, it's, you know, I'm sure I've met many police officers that are in that mentality that, oh, I've got a gun or I've got pepper spray. I'd love to go out and shoot someone, even though they haven't done that. But, I mean, you know, they, they get to play, you know, a you know, big, bad, tough, macho, whatever. And whatever, you know. And those companies use these things to their advantage. They know that they can do that. And if people really started to realize how much our lives are affected by businesses and other countries and politicians that do not have our interest in mind, and people just don't, they just don't pay any attention to it. I mean, people live their lives and they, oh, my job sucks or I don't get paid enough. Oh, well. But people are starting to realize. They're starting to understand how the Federal Reserve works. Anybody watching this video, on a side note, research the Federal Reserve, the people that print your money. Research it. You will want to kill everyone that works for that company. I mean, it's just, I don't even know how to, like, I'm not going to go into it. Just research it. Anybody, if you really don't want to know anything about it or just a little bit about it, you think we go by the gold standard and all these things, go research it. You will be appalled absolutely appalled. Okay, so, 
where, where, where was I getting with this? Okay, our country is in peril because of all this economic crisis and the Federal Reserve. And I support things like, I mean, look at me, obviously I support things like gay rights and, you know, all that. But those aren't really all that important to me in the long run. They're, they're important eventually because, they're, I mean, I, I hate to live in a country where not everybody has the right to do what they want to do when it's not hurting anyone, but that's not an immediate issue. Our economy is completely collapsing around us. Everything that we know, our cheap gas prices that, that we bitch about, or our, the fact that we can, we, we can worship anything that we want to, even though we might be persecuted for it in small towns or what, or, or what, what have you, we still can do it. And we could protest. And we can protest things that don't matter to, 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 larger, to larger entities. But all that is starting to get threatened. And it's been getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And people, are, people really need to just start researching the way our government works. They need to start researching the people that, they, that, they, that, that are running their, their towns. And the thing that most people don't realize, and this is the whole point of this video, is that right now, all our protesters, with, the, with an exception of a few people, are nonviolent. They're following the mostly kind of 60s, you know, during the civil rights and things like that, where people were protesting things, you know, the iconic imagery of man putting a flower in the gun and things like that. Okay, that's awesome. And that's the way it should be. But that's not the way it is. These people do not care how long you stand in the cold at all. You can stand there forever and die, and they don't care. And what's going to happen the more and more that the police are being used as, as the, uh, the scapegoat for this? Because really, right now, most people are just pissed off at the police. And rightfully so. People are killing dogs that protest and, you know, whatever. I mean, whether, whether things are deserved or not, the, the blame is being put on the police. And the police are the same people that need to be worrying about this. Military, whatever. I don't care if you're a policeman, military, or a civilian. If you were put in a situation to take somebody's rights away from them, whether they're in our country or whether they're in another country, it is your duty to not do that. Your duty. I don't care if you risk losing your job and you, and you risk losing everything about, about, you, about your comfortable life, although it's probably not very comfortable if you're a police officer. It's your duty to not do that, to look at, to look at the situation and be like, look, these people are just protesting. They're not doing anything wrong. Look at that. Look at it. And think about what you would do in your city if you were trying to get better pay as a police officer. You risk your life every day. You might need to get paid much more. You might get pay cuts. You have the right to protest that. You have the right to protest anything that you want. And you're taking those rights away from people. And people are going to start getting very violent soon. In a way that that's, the nation has never seen. People will, and I, I, this is the part that I, I guess will be controversial, but it's true. People will start killing police officers. People will start targeting. So people will start assassinating CEOs. And that's what's going to happen. It's not, it's not a question of if, it's when. And it's, and it's, and it's, starting, it's starting to culminate right now. You think there's not militias? you think police are going to be able to stop a thousand people with firearms coming at them? Do you think they can stop that? And once that happens, we'll have something similar to like the French Revolution on our hands. You'll have, you'll have things like civil wars and things bre breaking out. And you get things, how Occupy Wall Street had a precise, you know, they had a thing that they were, they were after. It was, a, it, was a, it was one thing. It was, a, it was a movement. And now there's all these different kinds of people. And once you get all these people in here with violence trying to start a thing, you start getting coups and you start getting murders and you start getting the people that don't really care about any kind of movement. They're just looking to rape people or kill people just because they can. And that's what all this is leading up to. And, and the powers that be kind of know this more than likely. And, or maybe they're trying to hide from it. But it's, it's going to happen. And 
And if, if you're just some housewife that lives in the middle of a suburb somewhere, this could affect you very, very soon. And, and I just don't think you people understand how soon I'm talking about. And you'll see that your economy is starting to collapse. Even if that doesn't happen, the economy is collapsing around your very eyes. But this doesn't have to be that way. The United States has always been, damn, we had peaceful protests to try to start change. You know, we had the 60s and things happen. People had sit-ins, whatever, and it worked eventually. It took a long time, but it worked. I mean, I love the, the you know, the, the philosophies of, like, Gandhi and Martin Luther King and all that. And, and even, even our government has done protests. Back in, back in the, I think it was the 80s and 70s, um, Jimmy Carter protested the Olympics over, ironically, the Soviet war in Afghanistan. And when the Olympics were being held in Moscow, he refused to let the American, he wanted to st stage a, uh, a protest and not, and, not, and, not, uh, and not participate. 65 countries followed suit, including Japan and China. Just the way that our country was able to, to show our, our, our stance on something. And that's a very powerful stance, the Olympics. The Olympics is usually a time when the world comes together and there's peace no matter who's, you know. But that's a very, very powerful stance. He got a lot of flack for it and probably is a huge reason, a big reason why he didn't, you know, end up getting reelected. But regardless of whether you agree with that or not, it wasn't an embargo. It wasn't hurting anybody. It didn't. It was. It was just. Hey, you know, we're doing something nonviolent. We're showing the world how we feel. But we can't even do that as citizens now. We can't do that. And what everybody needs to do is it doesn't have to come down to violence. Our government is set up, and 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 many people think that elections are rigged, which in some ways it very well may be, but. Not all the time, and if enough people vote, it's it's and people fight for those for those changes, it's gonna happen. But people don't vote. People my age don't vote. I lived in a college town where almost the entire population were people my age and younger. Yet it was it was ran with a mentality of of an older generation because no one voted. They don't care. They're not going to. They're only going to live there for four years or six years, or whatever, you know. But they don't vote. They don't pay any attention to who's running. So a lot of times, people just vote Democrat. I'm just going to vote Democrat. I'm just just going to vote Republican. They don't pay attention. Many Republicans would be very surprised at what an actual Republican is. Look at Ron, Ron Paul is a Republican. All these other people are not very much so Republicans in many ways. Especially, I mean, before we had like George, but like neocons. You know, that's not very Republican. Or at least sometimes they ran on a Republican platform and turned, turned around on it very quickly. But please pay attention to who's voting in your area. Even if you live in a small, crappy town, get, like, get involved. It doesn't take that much. I mean, just register and vote. It's not hard to voice your opinion. Go out and find somebody. Like, I personally write, like, like Ron Paul because... He's one of the only politicians I've ever seen that actually cares. He's not in, in it for for any other reasons, but I think, but just because he cares. I mean, you might think he's crazy, but he cares. He's an honest person. And he's actually going after things like the Federal Reserve that are crippling us and destroying our way of life. And that's something that we all need to look at. If you want to ban abortion or you want to ban gay marriage, cool, whatever. I don't agree with it, but vote for it. Even if you're young, vote for it. If you want people to legalize drugs or you want to do anything that you want to do, find candidates to support your views. There are candidates to support pretty much any of you you can think of. And if you get enough people behind them, they can win. It's happened several times. Big crazy upsets where just some random left field guy came in and won something because people voted. The people aren't voting and people are starting to lose trust in all this system, and people are going to resort to violence, and it's going to be a very, very bad day. And I hope it doesn't happen, but it might. So go out, read, scour the Internet, find books, read anything you can, absorb your mind with knowledge on anything at every possible angle. Look at the conservative angle. Look at the liberal angle. Look at any, any angle you can find on anything, on anything, so you understand what you believe in.
That's all I have to say. Thank you.